Welcome back. I see you maybe watched my first horrible video and came back for more. Um, so this last week, Sarah and I have been treasure hunting. And in the course of treasure hunting, we had to solve clues. So I figured, why not build my own cipher wheel? Like, that'd be fun. I got a laser burner. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna build a cipher wheel. All right, so I design all my stuff in a program called Lightburn. Uh, it's not free, but it works really, really well. Even though my screen capture sucks. So I'd already kind of pre-designed this and I'm just kind of going through all the assets right now to make sure they're all where I want them to be. And if you're interested in this file, let me know. I'll probably just send it to you. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun one. It's a fun one to build. And, and who doesn't just love time lapse? So it's burning. So I'm using three sheets of this very thin, uh, I think it's two mil plywood. Uh, got it off of Amazon, pretty cheap. It's about a dollar a sheet. Uh, and I need three sheets to make this one. Uh, so the first sheet, I'm basically going to burn all the letters in it and cut the top rings out. And uh, these little nautical star pieces I put on there that help you to have a little bit of grip to actually be able to turn it. Uh, and I've found that works quite well so far. So there we go, first sheet's done, second sheet is in. Uh, in this sheet I decided to put a nice little image of a snake eating itself. So this sheet's going to burn a top piece that's more decorative that you're seeing right there. And then it's gonna burn two internal rings that will help hold the top pieces in place. And then I just gotta burn the bottom piece to hold everything together. So that's where the three sheets come from. And you got to kind of stain it and do all the other stuff while it's apart. Uh, so instead of just leaving it that color, I decided to use a couple different stains on it. So I'll put a dark stain on and I'll kind of sand it back a little bit, rough it up a little bit. Uh, and then I'll put a second stain that's a lighter coat onto it. And uh, honestly, it really had no effect. I will take and go into that snake figure there and uh, do a completely different color of stain on that. Uh, and this is gunmetal, uh, so it's actually a very red stain. I just kind of go through and paint the whole snake, uh, trying to stay inside the lines like I learned in kindergarten to uh, make that pop out just a little bit more. And I'll take one of the other stars and also paint that the same color to give a little bit of contrast in it. So, I don't even let the stain dry all the way. Since this wood is so thin, it wants to warp when it's wet. So I'm gonna take and glue my rings up right away to help hold everything flat and level. And when doing this, you wanna keep the glue to the outsides. You don't wanna glue gooping up on the inside of it. That's gonna affect how the little track you made works. So just get the outside and uh, you should be good. You don't want a lot of squeeze out. That's what you want to avoid. Um, it also doesn't take a whole lot to keep these in place. So as you'll see, I'll get it all lined up, get it on there. 
and I'm just using a, another sheet of wood and a 10 pound weight to hold pressure on it to hold everything nice and even and straight with just some scrap pieces of wood. And then once everything's all glued together, uh, I wanna put a little, little finish on it. So I'm just gonna put some lacquer on it. I kind of put it on heavy uh, and then I'll wipe it off. But yeah, I just put a little lacquer finish on it. And you wanna do this before you assemble it because if you get lacquer finish into that little groove, uh, it's gonna stick and it won't turn because you will have essentially glued it together with lacquer. It's also important that you let this dry before you actually fit everything back together again. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Let it dry first. So this isn't the first one of these I've made. Uh, I've made like three of them and found issues. So I came up with this for a solution, graphite. Uh, it's just some powdered graphite to put on the surfaces that move. I didn't even put any finish on those at all. So uh, I had found other ones kind of stuck a little bit and I was having a problem with them. So I thought, well, let's get some dry graphite and hopefully that will fix that solution of allowing the wheel to actually be able to spin and not getting stuck or hung up. And so far in my tests, that has worked well. And then once you get it all done, you just kind of got to hold it together and turn it, get that graphite moved around inside there. And yeah, you're almost ready to solve puzzles. I know it's exciting, isn't it? So there we have it. One cipher wheel. Yeah, the middle turns. And uh, that's kind of neat. I mean, I could see someone using this for, I don't know, not much. Besides so trying to solve ciphers. Uh, but while I was making this one, I kind of had a brain thought. And when I have a brain thought, I gotta make it. So I made a miniature version of it as well. A uh, little handheld dial one. Basically took the same exact plans I had, made it smaller, but I also included a little mini skull in the middle of that one. So yeah, if you got an idea, build it. Have fun. This is Whiskey Tab Woodworking. Enjoy your day.